Good evening folks, Alien on it here. What you are about to watch is an interview of myself and Osvaldo Franco. Now Osvaldo has been a long-term subscriber of Alien on it and he has sent me loads of information onto the Stars Academy of Arts and Science. He told me about the Tic Tac UFO before it was even released. He knew about the Adam Project and he is also claiming that something is going to happen in March. I won't spoil it for you because you'll see what he's about to say. Uh, now, also what I didn't realise before I actually met the guy is that he has had experiences with UFOs before, up close and personal. Ladies and gents, Osvaldo Franco. So, it's been a long time coming, Osvaldo Franco on Alien Addict. I have been looking forward to this interview for quite a while now, mate. First of all, tell us a little bit about yourself and what got you into ufology. Gosh, well, um, uh, my name is Osvaldo Franco. Uh, I'm a ufologist. I live in New York City, uh, born and raised. Uh, at around the age of seven, I was involved with my family in the Hudson Valley sightings, which were the big... Yep. Uh, UFO sighting wave like for, not for years and years and years people don't talk about it very much anymore but um, this was like, there were thousands of witnesses this was like of course like, I think over three or four years uh, uh, in and around uh, the Hudson Valley area which is right next to Manhattan which is where I'm from and yes uh, UFOs do come into the city and yes we do see them um, and uh, basically uh, I was born uh, space mad I was always into space and science and technology, and uh, since forever. And I'm going to say you don't, you don't look old. old. I was around seven. Seven. So, you, so that's how how early you were into this from seven years oh, old. Yeah, well, I was I was like I was always into space and science and technology. I wanted to be an astronaut. The, the whole you know I, I haven't found a, a type of space I don't like. You know, basically, um, but. Uh, uh, basically, uh, we were walking across, uh, we live in a tenement building or, that are attached, there are two of them, and they're at the top of a hill. And um, my mother's disabled, and it was easier for her to, uh, we live on the fourth floor, it's a five-story building, so we would uh, walk up to the roof, cross over on the roof to the next building, and then go down another floor, and there would be like tenants meetings and things like that, and like people would vote on, you know, it's like a, a cooperative type thing. Yeah. Um, well, we would do this uh, regularly, like at least once a month. And one day, uh, one evening, uh, we we're walking across the uh, the the roof, and uh, there's this weird, strange, pulsing sound, like womb, 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 like really deep womb, womb. And I start thinking to myself, I remember being a little boy and thinking to myself, what is that? And then. Uh, our neighbor who was with us said, what is that? And my mom and the neighbor start looking left and start looking right. And I'm a little boy. I don't know any better. So I look up where the sound is coming from. And there's basically this giant circle of these hemispheres, like eight to ten of them, basically glowing. Then they would glow on and off as this thing made this sound. And they were like basically attached to the, like They were doing a circular formation and they were attached to something huge. Wow. And we were under this thing for maybe two or three minutes while this thing just pulsed away. And then it just, it pulsed, and then it was gone. Then there was just empty sky. It didn't streak away. It didn't break up into little pieces and fly off or something like that. It was there, and then it was gone. How, how, and, how did and that make you feel at the time? I mean, I was thrilled. This was not, like, like some people get, like, I, I've never been afraid I'm not afraid of them. I've never been afraid. I, I, I can get where some people can come out that you know from that. But no, this is the most. When that happens, it's the most amazing thing ever. Like yeah, I, I've never stopped trying to chase it. Yeah, I've, um, I've, I've kind of always wanted to have an experience like that myself. But it, it's. Uh, but yeah, you do it. I wish it upon everyone in the world. I wish it upon truly. I do. But it's so it's, it's just. Most people will tell you that this isn't. I've heard this before that people say it is just it's emotional and it's the best feeling in the world but also you it brings so many other emotions to oneself oh, yeah. it was kind of a one-two punch because uh i had uh like once as it happened i had uh i, I remember coming home my father was downstairs 
He had already uh, been home, and I was like, we, we saw this thing. I was like, oh, it was just a satellite, which it wasn't. You, you can't hear a satellite but uh, from orbit. But um, anyway, uh, it hit the news, and it was everywhere all over uh, the city that, you know, there are, like, these UFO sightings in this area and in and around the area. And uh, they started then showing these UFO documentaries. And I remember uh, about two or three days later, they showed uh, an old Rod St uh, Sterling UFO documentary called UFOs Are Real. And uh, that was the first time in my life that I saw uh, Stanton Friedman, uh, first yeah. of many times. And uh, that's the first time I heard about Roswell. And I remember being a kid, and, I, and I, like I said, I was a very studious kid. Uh, I knew everything about the space program up and down. And I was like upset that nobody had told me that UFOs had crashed, that we had actually had some type of extraterrestrial contact. And I remember being re very, very upset about this. And then um, I was watching the news and as a kid, and I saw uh, an attempt to debunk what we had all seen. Saying that it was super light airplanes, like they were formational, like you know, both nonsense, absolute nonsense, and that got me angry, and I'm still angry. Yeah, you know, and I've been fighting that fight ever since. It's like, it's kind of a calling. Like you, when you when this something like this happens, like it, it's a it's a big deal. Like I, I know there's some people that can have like you know a UFO crash in their backyard and just put away the pieces and go back to their life, but. Uh, you know, don't think about it, but, uh, no, this is, like, this, this is, like, I basically, I got a, I got a good dose of this up close very early on, and, uh, uh, and it wasn't the last ever time since. that I, that I've, I've been very fortunate, uh, when it comes to, uh, being at the right place at the right time for some very interesting things. Yeah, I mean, I've, uh, well, to, to bring the audience up to speed, so so me and you have been speaking for a long time now, and you've always fed me stuff from To The Stars Academy, uh, the, the Tic Tac UFO, before it was even released. Um, so the reason why I wanted you to come on is just to tell the guys um, why you have so much faith in uh, To The Stars Academy and what, what, what you see in this company. All right, well, why do I have faith in To The Stars Academy? Well. The fact is that TTSA has made some substantial contributions to ufology, huge ones. One so big that some ufologists still try to pretend like they didn't do it. Because yeah, this, this is a very competitive field. There's a lot of like haters and very just nasty people. Um, yeah. You know, people people uh, poisoning good research to further bad research because their research is the bad research. You know, um, it's a. a but, but, but why? Well, let's see. To the Stars Academy, what did they do? They released three, they got the government to release three uh, uh, gun, like literally gun camera footage of UFOs, something that we've heard about for decades, yeah. even generations that, that exists. No one ever got any, and we got three examples of that. After like 50, 60 years of research as a field, we finally got that. Not only that, we also got like, like people don't talk about, when they examine the footage, they examine the footage themselves. They'll like, you know, pull out a, a ruler and, and, and put paws on the TV and, and you know, try to measure it. But they don't read the papers that came with the footage that have, like, you know, this is like the this DOD, you know, uh, analysis. Yeah, that's this one thing. The I've, best of the best. Yeah, that's what I've seen. You you do break that down and you do send me like literally sheet. Even though I'm dyslexic, Osvaldo, <laughs> but you send me sheets and sheets of really good information that I mean you saw um, a couple of videos ago where I, I I read that out and it was it was a struggle but it was so interesting um the stuff that you that you are getting is it's very oh, yeah, no, I, 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 yeah I, I, I listen after doing this for my whole life I've seen all types of hoaxes all types of scams a lot of like doing this type of research is making mistakes like anything else, you know? Uh, sometimes they get so frustrated they throw in the towel and they do so prematurely. It's kind of like, uh, uh, it's, all right, like, I, I, I'm going to clean up this reference. It's a, you, it's, it's a reference that, uh, a colorful reference that uh, when you speak to a ufologist, they, they will talk 
to each other in use. Uh, ufology is a lot like sifting through feces for diamonds. <laughs> Basically, let's just call it feces. Uh, because I don't want to demonetize you, but uh, basically, you go and you, you basically you, you're sifting through tons and tons of feces, and once in a while you get a diamond, right? So you take the diamond, you put it in the, the, the faucet, and you throw it in a pile, right? You're there for 30, 40 years. After a while, you know, you start getting one more diamond, and you put it in the pile. You know, after a while, that pile starts growing. And you basically, even though you sit through all of this uh, manure, you've got a pile of diamonds there, man. That's a that's awesome. You see, know, those are really valuable. So I'll say, you so you, you've basically got to sift through the shit before you find yeah, the good stuff. And, 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 and then here's another scatological reference, you know. And then like with ufology, the other the other is is that like it's kind of like ufology is like you know. A, because like, you also have like a lot of hucksters and liars and like people just playing games and like you know and then odd things like that thing Wilcox tried to pu- uh, 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 pull a few months ago with uh, Corey Good trying to copyright yeah. people's research like this like this uh, horrendous thing so like yeah it's kind of like all right let's say I have a bowl of magic ice cream and ufology the truth behind ufology is a bowl of magic ice cream right. <laughs> Now this ice cream is not only super delicious, right? But it imparts wi- unlimited wisdom about the universe and eternal youth, you know. And and and, and it makes you rich. It's like no th- no problems with this ice cream. This is the best ice cream ever. And then you have you know these guys that like you know like that you know uh, like the Alex Joneses and the uh, and uh, the David. I Wilcox. love Alex Jones. No, he's, he's not so bad, you know, like, oh, he's, he's, he's a bit overflown, but the thing is, it's like, those guys go, and then they go and they take a dump on that bowl of ice cream. Yeah. Now, who's going to sit there waiting to eat around the, the, the feces? Well, I, I'll be honest with you, if someone's shit in my ice cream, I don't... I, I, yeah, I, you don't I, want I, it, so that's the thing, so this subject, basically, they, 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 they literally poop on it, and then nobody wants to touch it, no one knows what's, you know, mm-hmm. in the bowl. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, you know, it's it's a, it's a uh, like there's a lot of problems with ufology, but it looks like we're you know we're 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 making huge progress. Would, would like, you... it's like, and and I and I do believe it is because of, like you know the military is uh, involved in this. I do believe that the military is basically you know giving this up to the private sector. Uh, it is deliberately done. These things aren't being done. This isn't happening because we're all like necessarily great researchers. Most of this stuff is classified. You know, it would not be allowed out unless it's supposed to be, you know, uh, because of somebody else's, you know, agenda. Yeah. That yeah. should be a lot. Now, that being said, um, I'm fine with that. As long as we're getting this out and people like, oh, they're going to spin it. This We live in a day and an age when everything is spun. Definitely. UFOs will be no different. You should not expect it to be any different. Uh, you just have to be an, a, a mature adult about this. You have to go around, gather your own information about this and try to make wise decisions. You know, the same way you do with politics or any other issue where things are, you know, there are gamesmanship is afoot. Would you say that a lot of the lack of trust that is out there, that I've seen myself, and you know I'm a big fan, um, is because of Tom DeLong. If To The Stars Academy did not have Tom DeLong as the front man, would people have more faith? No. Uh, um, I, I, I don't know. Perhaps if it were... I think whoever got it out in front of this was going to have issues. I mean, if say if it was, instead of Tom DeLonge, it was Tom Hanks, you know, <laughs> somebody of a much higher profile, uh, that might actually, uh, like, you know, being directly involved, not simply saying, well, I believe that there are aliens or that I saw a UFO, but like in some, like, yeah, I, I, I'm working deep inside a project with military people and we're bringing out this technology and this footage, etc. Uh, that might have had more of an impact, but no, I don't think that, listen, Whoever was going to go out in front of this first was going to deal with all sorts of nonsense for the UFO community. The UFO community is like that. Uh, like, do not get into ufology unless you like getting kicked in the nuts. Because um, it's going to happen. It's going to constantly happen from the lowest level up to the highest level, uh, especially when you're doing good work. Yeah, I mean, Tom DeLong, um, I think he's done. I think he's done a great job with it. Um, but so many people are just saying, you know, he's a front man. What? What do you? Th- what, would you what would you say to them? Well, uh, 
Jeff Bezos is a front man. Uh, uh, Elon Musk is a front man. Donald Trump is a front man. Uh, 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 Colonel Sanders is a front man. Everybody's got a front man. Cool. You know, uh, you can't say Apple computers without thinking of Steve Jobs, and he's been dead for several years. You don't even have to be alive to be a front man. You know, uh, it's just like, you know, like somebody's, listen, somebody's always in charge of, of these things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're just not used to it when it comes to this. You know, or, or we're, 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 we're not used to dealing with anybody that might actually have authority in this. We have people that are good at take, get, making guesses, such as myself. There's another level of people that actually have inside access and are, uh, you know, like, like, are involved in really, really deep stuff that is being made public for the first time. Uh, and, like, this, this I, I, you know, I, I think part of it is sour grapes. Um, there's some ufologists who are like, I've been doing this for decades. Who does this guy think he is? You know, uh, Johnny Rich Boy is going to come in here with a smile and his fangs, and he's going to be, Mr. Ufology, no, this is my house, you know? The problem is he's doing a better job than you did. Mm-hmm. For you know the, the the fifty years you've been running things, you know, and not getting a whole lot done. Like honestly, ufology has been, in a lot of ways, an exercise in futility. The reason why I don't think ufology collapsed, you know, due to lack of progress, is because UFOs kept coming, and you know the the aliens or whoever these beings are, they didn't stop coming, didn't stop showing up. They kept coming, and that's why this is a persistent rumor that never went away. So you're convinced it's alien? Yeah, I'm like, listen, if you, again, people don't, if you if you read the reports, and then and, and furthermore, there's some really, really great interviews with the pilots from the Nemec uh, uh, situation, yeah. not only just the pilots, but also the guys that were in the radar uh, 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 room on board the ship. Uh, they all said like, that these things came in from high orbit. Literally. Like, they, like uh, I think... Uh, Corbell said something about how they, these things like uh, were like coming in at ICBM trajectories, which basically means, you know, orbit. Uh, and uh, basically, these things would come from orbit, drop, literally fall like a stone till they were just above the ocean, stop, you know, zip around, do all those things, and then shoot right back up into high orbit. Now, this is the thing. Are they using, like, there are people that go, well, they're from another dimension. Nah, not necessarily. Uh, when you have, like, if you study physics, especially theoretical physics, especially the, the frontier stuff, which is now more and more looking a lot like ufology, um, it's, like, like, basically, like, the way it works is you could, you uh, like, say, for instance, if we were to try to travel in space, or, like, what the Stars Academy is going to be doing, um, what you do is this, you create a bubble, that allows you to trans like to access other dimensions, right? Temporarily, until you get to a certain place much faster than you would, and you drop out of that dimension back into regular space. Do whatever it is you're going to do, and you fly back up. You know, put yourself back into that uh, dimensionality, and then you go back to wherever it is that you came from very, very quickly again. Um, that's the thing. Now, does that mean that all UFOs are ex- necessarily extraterrestrials? No. Um, it's a big universe. And there's a lot going on, and there's a lot of like you know there there are possibilities of beings that and I do believe that there are there are beings yeah. that Osvaldo, that could, just, just can just let me just rewind one second there. So sure. when we talk about um, to the Stars Academy and the 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 big thing that stood out for me first was when in the in the conference when they mentioned building that craft way way down the line. What I want to know because you're going to know this who are how are they going to get the funds together for this and how who's going to be I, this is the thing they are uh, they've said before that they have certain strategic alliances um, I believe that's so like I mean this is the only way that they're like getting this is because they have alliances with certain people uh, I would not be surprised like uh, well basically one of the things like well hmm I, I mean Perhaps we could talk about this in regards to like like the last uh, uh, Instagram post that Tom DeLong posted, yeah, sure. which is really, really just like an amazing post. Uh, all right. Well, long story short, um, talking about the, the connections that these that to the Stars Academy has, um, the first member of the Trump administration 
to join the advisory team uh, was announced by Tom DeLong on Instagram around two weeks ago. Uh, and uh, hold on a second, I have the gentleman's name here. It is uh, hold on, hold on. Pardon me. excuse me, yeah, uh, Chris uh, Herndon, who was basically in charge of communications for the White House. Basically, all classified communications, anything coming in or out of the White House, this guy was in charge of. And uh, he is now officially a member of, to the Stars Academy's advisory board. Um, this is like, you know, an extraordinary thing. This means that their connections didn't end with, it looks like, like this was being prepped for Hillary. And then Donald got elected. And like there was some concern whether or not this would affect the, uh, uh, this yeah, project, and apparently no. Uh, it hasn't affected it, and uh, in a negative uh, way as of yet. Who knows? But um, uh, you know, like so, Delon posted that, and in the same posting, he was talking about how there had been critical breakthroughs with uh, the Atom project. Yeah, which is, I wanted uh, to talk about. Con- yeah, which is basically uh, their uh, uh, their attempt to uh, study retrieve bits and pieces of, of wreckage. And uh, apparently he said that there's been a major breakthrough uh, with that. He didn't say what it was, um, but that's coming. And, so it is uh, wreckage. It is re- it, you, you believe it's definitely yeah, wreckage well, and not well, just uh, asteroid rock or whatever. No, I, I mean, like, I'm using the term wreckage just because like, that's the term we've always used. Perhaps I should use artifacts because, like, you know, some of these, well, this is the thing. Hal put off insinuated that some of these things might have been knocked off of UFOs. Like in attempts to like say to like shoot them down. Okay. Uh, 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 other things might have just been left, you know, like as samples of something, and others might have been uh, still, you know, from like what we would consider a formal like crash, like you know, a disc sticking up the ground, you know, type, uh, you know, Roswell like level uh, UFO crash. Um, the, the thing that got me with that. Uh, when uh, when you wa- I watched the brief video that they put out is that they it looked like they went to somebody's farm and they got these pe- is, am I right they, they went to, to some guy's house got the pieces where oh, where's this for- yeah it looked like they, they when they went out to get these pieces of fragments of metal or what have you where, where did they get them from because in the video it looked like they got them from well they have this is the thing, they have like something like 19 different samples of last right. count. Um, and I, and rumor is some of them might be biological. Okay. Which is very interesting. I'd yeah. like to, but th- that's just the rumor, we haven't heard anything else yet. Um, but like To The Stars Academy does have the ability to study, uh, study uh, biology. In fact, uh, they hired the, uh, 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 the geneticist that did the work on the uh, serious anaconda being uh, Gary, is it Gary Nolan? Is, it, is that his name? I think something like that. The, what do you mean? And, you mean the little, the little that, that, that action figure? That yeah, turned the, out, that the, uh, turned out to be a person. Yeah, but, it's uh, turned out to be a person. But the the thing is, I I had some questions about that. I did a video that and uh, Dr. Greer did a a really pissed off video. <laughs> Um, where he, he starts speaking about uh, Gary Nolan taking this research to the Stars Academy and then it being just totally debunked and was in fact a fetus that just had this really rare genetic and, and I kind of like I was looking at it and thinking this is just really kind of a bit strange that all of a sudden this guy that's working for uh, what's Green's company? Serious project uh, goes to to the Stars Academy, and then it's just blown out straight away. Yeah, no, that is odd. That is odd, and um, you know, and, and I would like to know more about that as well. Uh, I, I assume in the years to come, we'll find out more details. Because Doctor Green looked really pissed off, didn't he? Oh, he did. Like, but like this is this is also, I think, a, 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 a case where there's like. Uh, a bit of jealousy because like for the longest time everybody expected Stephen to be the guy yeah you know? well, well uh, I remember in 2001 when like the disclosure project hit and like basically we thought like we did it like this like you know this is going to happen sooner than later you know and uh, to, yeah the word got out but there was no consensus for people within the military 
or like you know like to you know other people that are in charge you know uh, on what to do they did not they decided that they weren't gonna you know give this up so easily and they didn't you know uh, until uh, recently you know it took uh, like 20 30 years for uh, for that to really hit and yeah. uh, you know, and now like I, I think uh, Stephen uh, Greer does deserve some of the credit for the fact that this is coming out uh, yeah. even though it's belated but uh, I, this idea that this was going to be from the outside, you know, and that the people were going to rise up, you know, and then tear down and demand, like, no, I don't think that was ever how this was going to go out. You know, this is the, 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 this is too powerful. The people that have control of this have control of this, and they're going to release what they want as they see fit. Uh, this was always going to be the case. So and, would you uh, say that both in terms of Dr. Greer and Tom DeLong's company, not knowingly, but would you say that they're possibly being used? Possibly being used. Listen, it is to the Stars Academy a front for other activities, probably. Most things are. I don't, like, 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 like the she, uh, uh, the government is using somebody to get something done, but they don't want you to know it's them. <laughs> like that, that's basically almost everything. That, that's like, you know, that's why you have McDonald's on submarines. You know, that's uh, so why you have like, like the, the, it's it's everything. Like, like that's why they, they're attached. They to have them. McDonald's on submarines. Did I hear that right? Yes, true. Yeah, you can. Yeah, at least in America. I don't know if uh, British <laughs> Navy has them. Uh, might be a Burger King for you guys, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, no, no, we got McDonald's, but just uh, no submarines. Um. Yeah, well, like, you know, whatever, like, you know, the point is, uh, everything is run by people that have agreements, to, 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 to have agendas, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's like that something is going to be like this, this idea that there's going to be no agendas to any, that's, that's childish nonsense. It's not how anything works. I, I mean, like, we have an agenda to talk about UFOs. Definitely. You know? And, and we're, we've conspired together and we're doing it, you know? And uh, this is the same as above, so below, just at a much, much bigger level, <laughs> about much, much bigger things. Um, like, like, that's the thing. The, the hemming and hawing from the people that don't like the Stars Academy are a, a bunch of uh, childish people that want their wishes to be fulfilled. These are people that are upset that they didn't ascend, and, you know, a few years ago, back yeah. when that was supposed to happen. Uh, I remember. Uh, I, I was very unpopular because I kept telling people, I will see you, like, you're, you're not descending. Uh, next year, I'll see you again at the same UFO meeting, and, you know, you'll still be here. And sure enough, not one left. Nobody ascended. Everybody was still here. Um, there's a lot of, like, chi- like for some reason, this, fe- this field attracts the smartest people and the craziest people. Oh, definitely. At the same time. Like, it, 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 it's like... It was you know, talking about David Wilcock before as well. Pardon? I said we were talking about David Wilcock before as well. Yeah, like this is like you know, there's there's like you know, uh, uh, it's 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 just so strange. It's like you know, uh, uh, you have like really legitimate, amazing people doing fantastic work, and like and and, and it's also one of the reasons why like I shied away from doing UFO lectures. It's just like you know, if you go to a symposium and you're debating you know something about UFOs, it's like you'll have like a scientist you know who has legitimate you know scientific information sitting on a panel with three uh, channelers. Yeah. You know, and none of them are, are telling the truth. You know, none of the channelers it is. You know, and, um, like, it gets embarrassing. Like, I remember once, uh, a few years back, do you remember the Roswell slides? Yep. All right, and... Uh, are you talking about Skinny Bob? Yes, yeah, and basically how... I've got a video uh, about that uh, coming uh, up. Don't read it, and it was like, oh my god, this is going to be in ufology for years. And then very, very quickly, the uh, uh, the, the pro science UFO community, people that actually do research and do verify things, very quickly debunked that. I was very proud that we actually, you know, did that. And it was basically grassroots. It was ufology, police, and ufology. This was not, you know, some debunker coming in and making us look like idiots. You'll have to send me that stuff. Are you are you talking about they debunked Skinny Bob, the um, the the channel that wasn't really a channel? It just released. Uh... Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, all right. Uh, a few years ago, uh, uh, there was a ufologist 
who 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 got caught lying two times beforehand, uh, literally like like lying about his information. Right. Um, they came up with this uh, these slides of what was supposed to be an alien uh, that uh, was on a uh, in a display, an alien body. Oh yeah. You know, okay. And it, and it turns out it was a mummy uh, uh, from South America, and like you could actually see the uh, uh, you could actually see the place card that was inverted. Like uh, if you just blew up the thing, nobody did that at first. So they just ran with this that this was this this uh, uh, this woman with uh, used to work for the military. She was an old lady, and uh, uh, these people had found these slides in her uh, uh, possession when she had died in her attic, and they were convinced that they were UF extraterrestrials, and it wasn't. But um, the uh, you know uh, the thing is is that uh, when they announced this, they had uh, Leslie Kane, who's a fantastic researcher, uh, on this panel with this guy, and she actually had to refute uh, this guy's uh, story to protect herself, even though she had nothing to do with it. You know, and she's a hard nosed, you know, logical like you know like interviews generals as documents and things, you know, actual journalists, ufologists, you know, credit to us. And uh, it's, it's hard because, like, in order to get into this field, you're going to get dirty, you know, just because there's so much, you know, like, like garbage. It, it, it's, a, it's a vexing issue. It's a, yeah, it's know, a, I mean, say 99% garbage. Is that diamond is 1%? Yeah, yeah. But... Uh, you know, like, and, and like, you know, and, I, and like, uh, and, and it's not to say, like, you know, and it gets frustrating. Like, I've tried to throw in the towel many times, but, like, you, you, you can't forget what you've seen. No, I can you imagine. Know? You can't forget what you, you experienced, you know, and, like, again, that's, you know, you, you keep coming back for that. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen stuff in the sky before I've, I've even filmed it but I've never I've never had that up close and personal thing. I've had things happen in the night that don't seem quite right that but I've never kind of thought you know what that's 100% that's 100% my, my dad uh, had a sighting out he was in the merchant navy and something went oh it, this is back in the 80s something went over the ship at a speed that he just couldn't comprehend and they called it in um, and that's what got me into ufo ufology. But back to um, uh, to the Stars Academy. Um, the re one of the main reasons why I wanted to do this discussion is what you said to me uh, about March, and we're in March. Oh, now. Uh, all right. So uh, there's a guy by the name of Kevin Day, and he's one of the uh, fighter pilots that was involved in the Nimitz uh, UFO uh, uh, events. And in it, uh, well, basically what happens is uh, Kevin Day posted a letter that he got from Luis Alizano, who is one of the guys that runs to the yeah. Stars Academy. Um, do a Google search, I don't know who that is, it'll pop up really fast. Um, and basically, I love him, He's a, he looks like a right hard motherfucker. <laughs> oh this. yeah, no, did you see him at the, they, they, they went to uh, Italy to do a, a presentation with Tom? Yeah. Like, he, 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 he speaks with Tom, but when he's not speaking... He looks over that crowd like a hawk. Yeah, yeah. He, that guy, that's just a, a trained security professional. That guy is, yeah, like, I, he's I, looking I, for any, like, reason to tackle you. Badass motherfucker he is. You can tell. Yeah, it's no, good. man, I, I'm glad he's with Tom. I yeah. bet he's got a tattoo <laughs> saying badass motherfucker <laughs> somewhere on his body that's as well. Good, yeah, and love and hate in his fist. You just don't see him. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, like I was saying, so... Uh, and in it, uh, in this letter, uh, he tells uh, Kevin that uh, they were going to have the next major drop of stuff in uh, late February, but it looks like that they had to push it off into in what is literally March, which is you know this month. Uh, in addition to that, um, he actually just uh, today uh, he uh, released uh, 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 like a blog about some of these. Uh, 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 things that uh, they've been talking about in, uh, concerning, like some of the other research. It looks like you'll have to send uh, me that, and I'll put it in the description yeah, below. Oh, absolutely, sure. Um, I was just reading it before I spoke to you, actually. Uh, I was skipping over it, but basically, the uh, uh, um, uh, uh, sorry, let me gather my notes. Uh, he uh, he's going to be 
basically he said that they're going to start uh, releasing stuff in March of this year um, and we're uh, and in addition to that uh, it seems like they're going to be talking about psi abilities like there's going to be more about this like like a lot of people know that you know apparently the the truth about UFOs actually like one of the reasons why this was kept quiet is because of the uh, the fact that psychic abilities are involved in this like when people like meet the extraterrestrials they don't have an issue with uh, translating you know it's not the arrival you don't need a mathematician and a, and a linguist uh, you just need to have a brain and then basically these beings actually like project thoughts into your head what you can like, project them the, back pardon can we project them back uh, they can read what we're thinking I don't know if we can actually project to them like, I don't know if we have like the, the I, I don't think we have the cranial capacity to, to do that if you if you look at them what they tend to look like and what we tend to look like our heads are kind of small you know but uh well, that's what yeah. that's what they they are um, how they're portrayed. Yeah, the... but apparently that's a that's a uh, that's a pretty accurate portrayal. Like I, 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 there's like uh, differences in them, but like that could be ethnic, practically, or yeah. like you know a, a different group of like you know like some moved to the planet on the left and you know ten thousand years ago, and now they look like this, but still similar. Um, so you, but, so, uh, so you are that is what the you would say this is what they look like they definitely the big eyes the the, the big eyes uh, well some of them there are others that don't look like that there's, there's there's some fantastic cases that are like verifiable uh where there are beings that don't look like that but show up but for some reason it seems like like these guys are like either they're more involved with us or they are more readily available to be involved with us you know what i'm saying like yeah. for some reason they're there like who knows? They could be, uh, they could be the cops. They could be the, the authorities that are in charge here. Like you know, they show up when like you know the U.S. government or uh, has done something. Like you guys, like you know, issue you a citation. You're not supposed to be using that that way. You know, <laughs> they come in and they you know do their thing or like you know like there's uh, some type of environmental issue or something. They have to go in and clean up a mess. You know. And then, you know, this so happens that I happen to be on the roof at the time when that happened, and maybe I got lucky. Yeah, that, uh, you know. That's kind of, when you, it's funny you should say that they could be the cops and the police things and what have you. This is when I was going back to the Adam Project, I'm, I'm thinking if, you know, I was uh, in control of the, an alien fleet or whatever, you know, I was the manager uh, that. Uh, said right go down to earth and bring back samples blah 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 okay uh, listen boss we've crashed one of our ships surely there must be some sort of um, device or that could get all these pieces that you know if, if you're that advanced you wouldn't leave the evidence you know that that's what well, that's there, well there are stories of, of, of reverse crash retrievals where uh, like in fact, that's one of the reasons why uh, they say our, our teams go in so quickly is because they do eventually go after these things. They try to get them back. Okay, do you think we're taking them down? Pardon? Do you think we are taking them down? Yeah, we are. We we most certainly are. To the Stars Academy actually says that like uh, basically uh, the story is is that uh, have you ever heard of uh, Project Starfish Prime? No. All right, ba- all right. Uh, basically, in the 50s, 60s, we were dropping nuclear. Uh, well, not dropping. We were like we were launching nuclear weapons into space. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because this is what all the uh, flat Earth theories say that we that we, we were trying to break the uh, the, the, sphere, the, the dome. Yeah, no, yeah. Okay, no. that's not what happened, uh, dude. I, honestly, I, all the other planets are around. Why not this one? <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is round. <laughs> it's kind of common sense. Round like your head. <laughs> but yeah, do you see that's a type of foolishness and then you see that like you know, like you, you will find flat earth there'll, there'll be a flat earth contingency at most UFO conventions, which is just like, you know like I, I just hate it. It's just like, you know, we, we are not the same. As my good You're friend not- Gordon Hamilton would say, just ask them about me meteorites. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that's pieces of the chandelier falling down. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know I'm I'm not a flat Earth 
a hater. I really, I believe everybody's got a right to their own beliefs. You know what I mean? It's, it, it's just to me. It's, it's not for me. Sorry. Yeah, that's, that, that's just religion, you know. And then, and that's going to be a really, really hard position to hold when, you know, like people start going back to the moon soon, and yeah, you know, going to Mars soon, you know, and finding out that there are aliens here soon. You know, there's a, there's a lot of very interesting things that are going to happen regarding space. Seemingly one on top of the other. Yeah, I mean, Elon with the 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 what's it called the B BF BFR is it the BFR? Yeah, no, he changed the name. I, do you know what he changed the name of the BFR to? What's he changed it to? Starship. Oh, that's got a ring yeah, to it. Yeah, I like no, it. No, no, but 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 wait, there's more. Uh, Elon changed the name to Starship, and um, this is you can check his Twitter feed. And uh, in it, he, uh, people were like, well, you can't just call something a starship. A starship, you know, insinuates you're going from one star system to another. It's kind of, you know, hokey that you would call it starship. And then Elon tweets back I am. That, uh, that future versions of this craft will be able to do that. Did not elaborate. Now, that's a very interesting thing to say when, you know, uh, major physics papers are being published about, you know, circumventing space time. Do you know? Because I mean, the, this video is very much a company, privately held companies with like major people, and you know, like the, uh, Steve Justice was running Lockheed Martin. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's a big deal guy to 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 run around after nothing and design a ship that doesn't work when everything else he work, does, you know, is, works so well it's classified. Just quickly, while you're speaking about Elon Musk, I mean, I did I put a tweet out and I said. I asked Elon, I didn't expect anything back, I didn't get anything back, but what he his thoughts are on To The Stars Academy, I would love to know that. Do you know what I mean? I'd love to know so what he... Let me know, know something. Listen, he has to... Listen, he started a rocket company from nothing. Yeah, yeah. And he, he has to know something. And uh, do you remember a few years ago when uh, one of his rockets blew up on the pad and there was this thing that whizzed by... And people were saying uh, there's a possibility that, that they're saying, oh, it was a UFO and the yep. UFO, like, you know. Right, and they they said it was like a, a drone that took it out, like yeah, yeah. alien and drone. Yeah, yeah, that's a possibility and they weren't discounting anything. You know, they, there, was a, there was a different explanation that was given. But uh, the fact is, is, if you are doing that type of research, like I don't know anybody that isn't into rockets. And, well, in aerospace, they call it the legend, you know, that, uh, you know, there's UFOs secretly being hidden. And there's crash discs, and the, the, you know there's people that you know. I got an uncle. I have a friend that worked on this. That's what it's called in aerospace circles. You know, I don't know anybody that didn't study rockets and has never heard of the bell. Yeah. You know, I have not ever heard of any. You know, they probably don't believe in it. Or in my like, I studied physics in college, and I was very very open about ufology, and um, that opened me up to a lot of ridicule publicly. In private, basically everybody that was like, ha, 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 would take me aside, ask me for more information about UFOs, take me to their room, show me their stash of Zachariah Sitchin books, like, you know, like a, like a kid hiding porno magazines, you know, yep. please don't tell been me that. Anybody. Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's like, I, I, like, you know, it, 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 still do it. it. <laughs> they would all ask me, they, you know, just don't tell anybody, and I, I, I you know, like, I, I don't violate people's trust, but it's like, if, you know, if only the guy you were attacking me with knew that you believed, and only if you knew that he believes too. Yeah. You know, but people were so afraid, especially in this field, uh, in, in in hard science, um, and that has done a lot of damage. Uh, in fact, uh, that, that's probably the fact that they poisoned scientists against this. Like even uh, 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 even uh, Bob Lazar says the first thought when he walked into S4 was, oh, these are ours. You be you be do you believe? Us. Do you believe Bob yeah, Lazar? Yeah, like, like so, you know, now that Bob Lazar says when he first met John Lear, whose dad invented the Lear jet, and was in charge of the Lear Jet Corporation, you know, and John Lear himself was an SR-71 pilot, you know. A Lazar felt bad for him when they first met because he believed in UFOs, you know. And then what's the next thing that Lazar finds out? Oh, these aren't ours. You know, you're not here to, to help us build this. You're here to tear it apart so we can figure out how it works. Yeah, the question I've always had there um, is, 
kind of like how it never explains much of how they got in the craft was the door already open did it have mechanisms or anything like that no, let's talk about that there is all right uh the door is closed they found out how to open the door he said basically uh there's a part where you put your hand on the saucer and there's like a, a hexagon shaped piece just disappears and then there's a second hexa then then the, the other hexagon piece disappears. It happens very quickly, and the thing basically collapses into the hole. Yeah, oh, a bit like the flight of the navigator door, where it just uh, molds. Sort of. No, well, no, no, no. It didn't. It didn't. That was an interesting movie. I love know? that movie. That was one of my favorite thought, films as a kid. Yeah. Should be a much bigger film. I don't know why it was. I don't know. <laughs> you know, but uh, I'm still waiting for the sequel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and then they're just gonna remake it and butcher it. Oh yeah, no, they were. Uh, that's a great, especially when the shit hits the fan with this. This would be that'd be a great uh, uh, property to hold for Disney. But um, they, uh, but yeah, basically it's like no, it wasn't liquid. It's basically this. It, it, it's like 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 I guess receding hexagons. Basically, like you know, like it's like yeah. a very quickly there's a hexagon shape, I'm you know, hole, and then another one next to it, and another one, and they all collapse until they make a bigger, you know, geometric, you know, area so that you can like slide yourself in. And that's how he would uh, uh, get into the saucer. And uh, then he uh, also examined the smaller uh, compartment. But just, uh, you know, speaking of which, there's one thing that I, I like, you know, uh, uh, Corbell's documentary was okay. Like, I, like, I'm, like, deep into this. I know a lot oh, of I, it. I, 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 I bought it. You know, I, 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 I thought I'm going to give the mummy. No, the things that he says are true. The problem is, is that they, there's a lot of stuff that Bob used to talk about that is not even touched upon mm. in that documentary, you know, such as like the hexagon, you know, doors. Well, this is it. Like that. This is it. This is this is what I said in um, a video about that. Um, I'll leave it in the description. Um, that it, the, the documentary was brilliant, but it was kind of like a rehash of just old information. Do you know what I mean? What what and hard sure. And not all of it. And the thing is, there's a lot of pertinent stuff like. Uh, Lazar used to talk about these other programs that were going on at S4, like, you know, like, you know, in the other, like, areas, like, including attempts at time travel. Like, like, really, like, heavy, like, you know, at the same time, if you know anything about physics, if you have the ability to generate gravitons, like, you know, and you're, you're, you're trying to figure out space travel, yeah, you kind of sort of have to have a, 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 a another program dealing with time. You're yeah, yeah. probably going to intersect a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, wait, what is it? With, with time travel, you can go back. It's been proven you can go back, but you cannot go forward. That's not necessarily true. Depends on who's. It depends on whose uh, theory of space time is true. I know Superman uh, can go forward, but um, yes, but you have to travel around the sun very, very fast, and they, 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 they there's collaborating evidence of that in Star Trek Four. But uh, <laughs> I mean. I've always asked myself self this with with UFOs. Could it be um, time? Could it be? Could they be doing something with time? Because people, I mean, I'm not really into this conspiracy at all. Um, but people always talk about, you know, you see these uh, Mandela effect channels and this, that, and the other, oh, and thing. Yeah, there's a Mandela effect. Stop drinking. <laughs> Stop drinking. Get help for your no, drinking problem. Honestly, I swear to God. I swear to God. Three Mandela effect. Like, 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 like. No, 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 no. That's for idiots. Listen. That's for idiots. Okay, like, no, that, see, that's one thing you don't have a right to an opinion about. No, I. <laughs> it, there's some crazy shit with that, but the the Darth Vader bit and the Luke bit. That's how I remember it. Uh, that's like. But no, I, I, I'm no, not a Mandela. No, no, things, things, things happened. They did. <laughs> yeah. It's like, but yeah, I mean, in terms of if these things can go this fast, I mean, can they can they can they can they go back in time? Uh, probably. Like honestly, they, this listen, there, there there's like you know in, in ufology, there's you know missing time, you know, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And I've often wondered if. In some cases, like, you know, some people say, oh, well, I must have been abducted. Perhaps not. Maybe you were in some type of spatial temporal distortion. 
maybe because of the drive mechanism of the ship, time, you know, uh, went by much slower or much faster for you, depending, you know? Um, not to say that you weren't abducted. There's also people that, yeah, they do get abducted and they, they, do, they have missing time because they went someplace. Yeah. It's, but, it's like uh, from probably one of my favorite films. You know, have you seen Interstellar? Oh yeah, of course. You know when they're on that planet and they like an hour is like ten yes, years exactly. or whatever. Very, very, very similar to to that, but not to the extreme. You know, if you're not missing like thirty years, you're missing thirty minutes. Would that even you be know, possible on a planet? Would that even is that even possible for a planet to have a different time? If, if I get it. well, the thing is that planet was uh, those planets were very, very next near to a singularity, and somehow they were still stable. So if you're that close to a black hole, yeah, you're going to have, like, odd, you know, temporal things, amongst other things, I'm sure. sure oh, yeah, because that, that, not... um, that was a made black hole, wasn't it? That, that, was, that black hole had been created for them to find uh, another... When you start messing with gravity, you start having some type of ability to control gravity, it, you, you start messing with space and time, you know, uh, very, very, very quickly... Uh, and, I, and I mean that from like uh, current verifiable experimentation that is that is occurring with these new breakthroughs that are based on uh, on uh, metamaterials, which is the crux of to the Stars Academy's technology. You know, all of these things are coming together at the same time, and like like, like it's just you know something is up and it's going to happen soon. Something is up. It's going to happen soon, and it's going to happen, I, I believe, this year. And hopefully, within the next few weeks, we're going to have all uh, quite a bit more to discuss. What are you expecting in the next couple of weeks? Well, okay. Oh, uh, more they, to the point. What do you want? Well, all right. They, they they say. Well, who knows what's going to come out? But they say that there's uh, they're going to be uh, dropping. For like, well, uh, the log and these other guys are going to be talking more about like you know these breakthroughs that they've made with Adam and this uh, engineering uh, of the space-time metric, which is basically uh, using metamaterials to travel faster than light. Um, they are going to be releasing also. Uh, they said five UFO videos that are going to be of unparalleled Sexy. quality. Like these, these are going to be. Like remember the three that were released before? Yeah. yeah. Those are supposed, they're supposed to, these are supposed to be much better than those, much better than those. And they and some of them won't be using like FLIR technology. It's not going to be like thermal resonance images. It's going to be up close, you know, ve- regular visual spectrum. What you would see if you were sitting in a jet and a UFO pulled up right by you. Okay, so it's not going to be from the gimbal. It's going to be just yeah. It's going to be yeah, like in your face. That's what it looks like when you see it with your eyes. And um, the other rumor is is that some of the footage is old. Some of the footage is uh, very old, and, and it's going to be from an incident that occur- a series of incidents that occurred in Brazil back in the seventies, where and like basically uh, the Brazilian government got a lot of stuff, uh, like up close video, uh, UFO uh, film footage, like up close, like like they're saying like when you see this, there's not going to be you're not going to be able to doubt what you're seeing. You might not know what it is, but you know, it's going to clearly be there and it's clearly going to be a machine and somebody obviously made it. Yeah, that, this is, this is the thing and this is why I, I, I want people to have trust into the Stars Academy because people, when they just see a video, so when this stuff just gets released, any, any video that's out now that is, that someone puts a lot of money into CGI wise and then puts a load of filters over it to make it look old can make something that is CGI look real. I'm not saying that this this is what the Stars Academy are doing at all. I'm just no, I'm just this saying is, is, I'm just saying people need to be on board. In this chain of custody. Yeah. Like, I mean there's like this is like real like honestly you, it, um, like th- this is the thing there's, there's there, this isn't just footage. The, even the stuff that's released isn't just footage. There's paperwork with it. There's data with it. See, this is know? what we need. Yeah, exactly. It's like uh, um, like these people that go, well, that's the, like, uh, there's some fools that tried to say that the Nimitz UFO video footage was a jet. Like, like oh, yeah. They're yeah, gonna that. that was, um, uh, what's, what's his, I forgot the channel name. Um, but yeah, I remember. And, and, and you know what? And they're playing the game. Usually when somebody makes a breakthrough in ufology, it tends to be bullshit. Well, 
I, re I, I know the channel. The channel is uh, one that works alongside every now and again with uh, secure team. I, again, I've got no problem with Tyler or anything like that, but this channel uh, kind of, I think, did this to get on to yeah. secure team. Um, to get yeah. their, their work featured out there and I saw yeah, they, they also get to ride the, 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 the wave of hate you know yeah. uh, like the, when, when, when you do something good in ufology get ready to pay yeah I mean there was not that was not a jet there's no, no way I I believe I would say know, I just, speaking of this though there, uh, the other uh, rumor is that those uh, the footage that we saw from, uh, that the, from the three videos that was released already uh we're, we're highly edited and that we're going to see uh like remember in the the audio they say wow look there's a fleet and we don't ever see the fleet we're gonna Apparently see there's footage of the fleet uh, that, that's what it, i mean one thing that stood out in the um the text that you sent me uh, not text the the tweet from tom delong the instagram from tom delong is yes. when he when they say that it's not going to all come at once. They've got to consider um, other parties uh, within this, and it kind of like actually got me thinking. I thought, well, it's making more sense now that they cannot just whack this footage out. They can't just open that safe and say, right, these are the pieces, because there is. I mean, there's investors, of course, and the investment has stopped onto the Stars Academy, um, and. I wonder, I'm wondering if that's because there is a bigger investor now. Um, there's, uh, let's just say that's the rumor. Um, uh, perhaps more than one. So he's not 37 million in debt then? Uh, no, that was, again, that was lazy. Again, people play the game with ufology. Yeah. They assume whenever anybody makes a breakthrough in ufology, it's bullshit, right? And that's because it almost always is. The problem is, is there's legitimate breakthroughs, few and far between, but they happen, and those get lost in the shuffle. And basically, this guy was some snarky guy that, like, you know, like, oh, this is obviously a scam because UFOs don't exist, and if they did, the government would get Tom DeLonge. <laughs> so he just went ahead and wrote a, a, a smarmy article filled with assumptions that were inaccurate. And the guy wasn't even a finance guy yeah. either, you know. So this guy was talking about things he did not know about. And, uh, like, DeLong got pissed. DeLong was, like, threatening, like, legal action, and I hope he takes it. Yeah, yeah. I do. I, I'm, I'm sick of these people that are just, like, like, especially now that, like, you know, now that, you know, burden of proof is on us, but guess what? Now we, we, we're fulfilling that, you know. Now it's time to return fire on those people that, you know, you know. Uh, well, you this know, is uh, it. I mean, have, if everybody debunks every diamond that's in the shit, then we'll never find one of these diamonds. Yeah, exactly. Or like, I'm, you know, I'm like, using your like, phrase here. No, yes, exactly. They try to tell you, well, you know, you don't have any diamonds, then you show them a pile of diamonds. Those yeah. aren't diamonds. Those are cubic zirconias. Yeah. Right? And you go show them, no, man, these are diamonds. And they, you know, they, you hand them to him. He cuts glass. He refuses to believe in it, right? And he says, I'm going to take these diamonds back uh, for analysis. You let him have the diamonds, and he sends you back cubic zirconias. And yeah. then insists that they're all fake. You know, then he pockets those. Uh, and sends them to who knows where. There's there's a there's a lot of gamesmanship in this, and there's a lot of weird uh, a lot of weird uh, uh, um, like okay, there was there's a story that's coming back into ufology now. Most people don't know this too. Uh, there was a uh, years ago, back in the seventies, around seventy four, there was a uh, an odd shaped sphere metal that was found and this became a huge thing in the national media oh is that the sphere that the guy had in his house uh, yeah well uh, it was a lady but uh, she uh, yeah she uh, he still has it actually uh, w nobody's been able to find this family for decades and apparently um, after being like hounded for so long they, had, they elected a family member to come out and start talking about what exactly happened and the story is fascinating about uh, all the times people tried to swindle them uh, this ball from them, including the military. Wow. You know, but not only that, they actually, uh, it looks like, what happened was is they, uh, they were, uh, and it's, it's very interesting, they, they, the military used the media 
to swin to try to swindle the ball from these people. Like this is like a verifiable fact. They 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 used a a, a, a very well known newspaper, a tabloid, but uh, they they literally swiped uh, this thing temporarily, and they had to threaten legal action, and they got it back. But, Did they get uh, the right ball back though? That's the question. No, the thing is, it was altered. When, by the time that they got the thing back, it had been altered. And uh, the how, thing how is, would is they that, know? How would they? Was, oh yes, well they don't know what happened, but uh, it was given back to them by the navy. Okay, and the and the, the owner of the ball says, "Hang, hang about you've you've fucked about this ball. It's it's not the yeah. same. It doesn't weigh yes, the same." Yeah. Yeah, and then, and, and then well, this is 1974. They told the lady to go away. <laughs> I'm surprised she got it back, you know. <laughs> Give me my ball back. Has, this was a smart lady. She had, like, documentation and things like that. Like, they, they played some really, like, you know, like, they're like, what contract? Like, when they had a contract, like, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can examine it. Uh, and it's very, J. Allen Hynek was directly involved in this. J. Allen Hynek was a principal player in that whole affair. In fact, I wonder if they're going to do an episode of Blue Book on that. I'd love to see that. Yeah. Um, but have you been watching that? Uh, yeah, uh, more or less. I don't like. I, I'm too close to this. Like, like, like. Or yeah. One of my least favorite shows is The X Files. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I hate X Files. I hate Fox Mulder. I hate Scully. Oh, you can't hate Scully. She's I hate fit. Their faces. I hate their faces. The look of these people. I don't go see movies that they're in that aren't about this. Right. It's like, like it's just like, like I, it, it, it was just like, I, like I said, I don't like my ufology mixed in with my. Ufology. Osvaldo is hardcore. You don't fuck about with ufology. Yes, exactly. Like, dude, don't, don't, never, I don't care. All right, even if there are reptile people living in the sewer, if they're not from another planet, I don't care. <laughs> you know, do, do you know? I, I, I I've said to myself, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop swearing on Alien on it, but sometimes it just just pops out. It just mm-hmm. just pops out. Um, yeah, I know I know what you mean. It's been a while since I've seen seen anything good sci-fi wise. Which I, I was, why I was quite excited when and everybody said, oh well, we're not interested in that to the Stars Academy doing stuff with entertainment. I am. I really am. Uh, gen- I'm really interesting for interested for them to do like a film or whatever or a TV series and just get it right for once. That would be. Well, good. Uh, to the Stars Academy is about to announce three more shows. Yeah, that's what Actually, I want. Like, amongst other things, they have. There's a lot of stuff coming out of To the Stars Academy. We're gonna go from not a whole lot to a whole lot very shortly. And. Then I just want to see like an Instagram post of Tom DeLong like that. If you saw the last one, he's blowing kisses. Yeah. And then he literally said, and you thought I quit my band to go just chase some flying saucers. Yeah. Well, and he, he said, you don't know that I'm in the captain's chair of the biggest thing that's ever going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's right. And like, I, like, God bless him. Like, you know. Uh, did you watch Travis Barker and Joe Rogan talk about him? And he's like, why would he leave a, a band when he's making so much money in, very, in a very successful oh, band? You, no, the, the best part is, in the uh, Joe Rogan interview, Tom DeLong very clumsily explains the, uh, how the, how the, mater- how the uh, metamaterials uh, 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 produce the special oh, effect. when he puts up the the triangle craft the CGI no no no, no. And he says like, like, like he says something it sounds odd like say you take one single electron and you stretch it over a, a charged plate and it sounds ridiculous but the thing is is uh, and I sent you that the the, uh, the the paper yeah that was published in Internal Nature that's basically what they're doing so again Tom DeLong is either a gifted scientist a, a brilliant psychic or Tom DeLong is working with some people that know a lot about this and that was two or three years before these papers were published I go with the third one he knows a lot of people um, yeah. yeah listen he's not like I don't think he's an Einstein no I just know, think he's he just be an Alexander Graham Bell and maybe that's what they need he, if and I asked myself this question, you know, if I was... Alexander Graham Bell wasn't a great inventor. He was this guy with a lot of money that bought other people's inventions or set them to task. 
take all these inventions and then he's like, ah, see, my light bulb, I invented But you see there's genius in that. There oh, is. yeah, there is. Yeah, Steve Jobs is the same way. Yeah. You know, maybe that was the thinking. We need a Steve Jobs. We need, we need some type of creative, arty guy to, uh, to head this, uh, this tech group up because it seems to work very well in a PR sense. If, if you had a message for Tom DeLong, what, what would you want to say? Gosh, uh, are you hiring ufologists? <laughs> I'll move. <laughs> I don't care where, dude. I will, I, I will sit in the bunker underground where we're doing great work. And, I, and I'll sign my life away. I don't care. You know, my mother understands. <laughs> Can't say nothing. I, I, I said I'd save this for Tom DeLong, but it's kind of like... Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, he's got he's got the... Uh, uh, oh, my God. Like, you, you imagine with that guy... Like, when that guy gets, like, lit, it must be amazing. Yeah, oh, all, that rock, all the rock star connects. Like, yeah, I don't think that ever leaves you. I think I think once once it's in your blood, it's it's there. Fair enough. Even when he's doing a bit of, with, his, with his science stuff and uh, his hardcore research... You know, he'll break a, break open a beer every now and again, and or whatever he, whatever else he does. Um, but yeah, I've, I, I I like the guy, I like the company, um, and I'm I am excited to I'm, I'm very excited now for this five. So honestly, for for all of it, these people, yeah, has it been a while since we heard from them? Yeah, but the last time we heard from them, they made three of the big critical UFO breakthroughs in a row. And I think that a lot of that went over people's heads because we're used to not having much. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's that's the danger of this. You know, we get we get given we get sidetracked in this community. We get so much bullshit and so much just fake crap shoved in his faces that we then when we're given something, it's like no, too good to be true. Yeah, no, no, and that's. And that's kind of, and it's because part of it is because yeah, because we've been treated so badly. Yeah. You know, um, that's true, and we've been we've been effed with quite a bit from within and outside. We've been screwed over by charlatans within the UFO community. We've been screwed over by charlatans within the defense intelligence community. Um, you know, like you you've seen Mirage Men, you know, and uh, you know about Richard Doty and that, that whole situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, like you know, like there's like you know people have almost gone to jail from within inside the government for perpetrating UFO hoaxes. You know, this is, this is, uh, uh, an empirical fact. Um, and, uh, like, and because like, honestly, they, they, uh, to make sure we didn't make critical breakthroughs, like, you know, people would poison the well. Have you ever thought about having your own YouTube channel? Yeah, I, I, people say I should have a channel. I'm thinking more and more. I, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I want to have a channel at some point. Well, you know, I'm, let me know, and you know, I will, I will support it because, mate, you can talk. And this is why I've, I've kept quite quiet during this interview because you're just generally very interesting to talk to. Oh, well, you have a lot to say, and then I don't have a lot of like, you know. Bef- uh, uh, before, because I don't want to keep this interview too long, because I want to do some more interviews with you at some point, if you'd be up for that. Oh, dude, whenever you want, you let yeah. me know. Can, can you tell us some more about your own experiences? If we go back a little bit, can you, can you, I, I don't want you, don't you, I know we, we spoke before, that we, we, we spoke before this and you said, look, I, you gave me some information, that, that stays between me and you, uh, but can you just digress a little bit more on that them first sightings that you had? All right. Once. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Damn it. Okay. Hmm. How do I put? All right. Once uh, there was, we saw. Well, I, I seen a silver disc, like basically fly, ne- basically come next to a building, stop, t- like turn back around, and then shoot off. And it was silver, and there was like some type of indentation in it. Is this when you? Were, this was a, is this when you were a child? No. This was maybe 10 years ago. Shit. 
Yeah, um, like I said, I've been, I live near and around the Hudson Valley area. I think that we live near some type of, uh, I'll say conservatively, some type of base. It could be a dimensional portal, which is also one of the things that is going to be discussed is that apparently there are dimensional portals. Like they, like, like things like, you know, like when ATIP was studying a Skinwalker Ranch, it wasn't because they were looking for poltergeists. You know, they were looking for, like, you know, basically holes in space time. And apparently, uh, they found a few of them. Um, this is going to be, like, again, this is going, this sounds crazy. This sounds crazy. And I, in fact, when I first heard about the, the, the this portal thing, I was very much against it. As we don't have a long tradition of this, I'm, I'm very conservative with my ufology. You know, like, I don't, like, I don't get excited when somebody tells me about a, a new weird shaped UFO. UFOs are spheres, they're cylinders, they're discs, you know, uh, and sometimes wedges. And that's about it. When somebody comes at me with some other weird stuff, that's one of the, the ways I can, like, you know, like my knowledge of the subject is like, that's not what those things look like, so I know it's not that. Do you, you, think, know, like it's the, do you think some of them are unmanned? Uh, yes, they're absolutely manned. The interesting thing is that... Not unmanned. Increase, Pardon? Unmanned. Do you think most? Unmanned, yes, yes, they're definitely they are definitely unmanned UFO. In fact, that's becoming more and more of a thing that's uh, occurring in, in people's contacts in the last like maybe decade or so. Is that um, like people are and you, and you hear about it like people will come home and they'll like you know uh, they'll come home and there's a silver ball hanging in the living room. <laughs> There's just like, you know, hanging the sides of a medicine ball, just like, how do you do? You know, and it's there, and then they go. You know, they're like, like UFOs, listen, they're, they're there to do what they're there to do. If they have business with you, you'll find out. Um, if they don't have business with you, you'll never know. Um, you know, that's, and, and, and yeah, they have drones. In fact, I would say that our drone program probably came off of their drone program. Yeah. You know, we probably picked the idea, and some of the tech. Do you, um, do these, so do you, do you believe in, um, so I'm going to say the word, but UFO summer, summer, UFO summers, you know, these like Dr. Greer, like he go, takes people out to the beach and then, phew, sure Listen, enough. I, uh, I believe that in some cases, I think some people are closer to this than others. So you think there's some sort of spiritual... I don't know. see. That's the thing. I don't like the term spiritual. When people use spiritual, it's a, it's in place of science. When this is all science, right? Even psychic abilities exist. It's still science. Like you know, like like remote viewing is like you know. Uh, uh, the best thing about remote viewing is it took a lot of these weird hocus pocus ideas, you know, and then replaced them with science terms, you know, without attaching like religious ideas or or, or concepts or, or deityism to them. You know what I'm saying? I don't like. You know, I don't like. Uh, uh, like I, said, I don't like. Uh, I don't like psychics. I like remote viewers. And even then, you know, uh, I take a grain of salt with all of that. Uh, I believe that there are some people that are closer to this than others. I believe that there are people that have uh, abilities to do certain things, including contact extraterrestrials, to greater or lesser extent, depending on that person and their abilities to do so. Um, it's kind of like uh, it's like playing basketball. Like, uh, you could uh, take somebody and uh, have them play basketball every day for 30 years, you know, from childhood on, and the guy grows up to be 5'8", and he's playing basketball, he's get really, really good at, like, you know, at, at playing the game, he's, like, really functioning, he's fantastic, and then you take uh, a teenager who's, like, 14, but he's, like, 6'5", and you have him play basketball for three years every day. And then you put them, uh, you know, against each other. That kid's gonna dominate. Yeah. You know, that shorter, older guy with much more experience. Why? Because that kid has a natural aptitude for that. I believe that there are, and this is not just a belief. Um, there's more stuff coming. Uh, apparently, there are ways of identifying people. Like, I mean, like there's a test, like a 23 and Me type thing. Yeah. Where, I need to do this uh, test. Yeah, like they are gonna. They are able to, and this is coming from some very interesting sources, up to and including the Rendlesham Forest witnesses. Yeah, that was in yeah. the 1980s, wasn't it? 
It, in fact, yeah, it was, it was well, December nineteen eighty. Yeah, I was. Um, that's when I was born. It, yeah, ha, good so, timing. Yeah, <laughs> it was meant to be. But, I keep uh, saying uh, to all my subscribers that I'm gonna go and. Uh, you may have seen the video where I, where I say I'm going to go out to Rendlesham Forest. I'm going to do it. I just need it's, it's so hard with work and two kids and a, and a wife that beats the shit out of me. Um, but, but yeah, I'm going to get myself out there. That no, but yeah, I would love to. Dude. That's like awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, I heard it's empty. Yeah, the, the, and there's loads of group. They've got a, a monument in the middle uh, of the UFO, uh, and it's full of graffiti. So I'm going to take a look. I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to clean it up. Yeah, no, that's true. See, now that's the yeah. We, we should do better. Now that's that, that's what I'm wondering. Like, what's going to happen when this comes out? I mean, it's like the. Is the Rosmo Museum going to be like this big thing now? Like, is it going to be like, you know, they're going to get a, a grant from the federal government make it look like the Hidden Planetarium? Yeah. You know, or like, you know, or, 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 or that. Is there, or like, is Rendlesham Forest, are they going to, you know, have, a, you know, an armed guard standing next to that thing and having like, you know, you know, like the kids come in buses to the to the center they built over? You know, like, like what is, are, you, are your children, you should think about that, man. Your kids are going to grow up with this not being a, a weird thing, but something that they could, you know, learn about in physics class. Yeah. You know, you're, they're still very young, dude, and this is still just happening. Hey, I, um, that I look forward to. That, like, I'm jealous of your kids. Well, the, the, the thing <laughs> is, you know, the, can you imagine this in, uh, what, ten, maybe 10 years, 20 years? Can you imagine a future where they're, they're telling our kids about aliens? Oh. Well, it's not even telling them about this. It's not even that. I, 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 it's like, what happens 20 years after that is the question. <laughs> yeah, it's scary. Like, cause, yeah, because we're, we're looking as a society, there's going to be, I, I would say, maybe a decade of fallout. It's going to be yeah. like a decade of fallout. Like, you know, they, weird cults will rise and fall, like all sorts of things. People are going to question a lot of stuff. I think that uh, uh, this is going to have a weird cathartic, like, like, all right. In America, we had a situation called Watergate in the 70s. Uh, and we ended up like a uh, president by the name of Richard Nixon was forced out of office. And after that, people like, you know, a lot of people became very, very jaded because of, you know, that, that and the Warren Commission, the poor people started realizing that they were not being told the truth about many things. And that, like, you know, they were, they were being, you know, and, and that's the thing. I'm, I'm wondering if, like, Stanton Friedman says this is a cosmic Watergate. And for decades, you know, people use that. Like, in fact, it's been the title of books, Cosmic Watergate and things like that. But, like, I don't think anybody really thinks about, like, you know, the implications. Like, people were, like, like, like you know, uh, there's a lot of civil unrest for these things, you know? There's a lot of, like, you know, there, there were consequences to being known that you, that you lied about. I mean, like, like, honestly, first thing comes to mind is what else is a lie? Yeah. What else is so not being told? Osvaldo, right. But I'm going to have to pick up my little boy from... Uh, his uh, what they call it nursery um, but before we go um, what I want to what I want you to do when I put this video out um, so I'm going to edit it all together I want you to uh, put your comment below I'm going to pin it and then anybody this is the man Osvaldo Franco he knows shit loads about to the Stars Academy and other stuff he, can you can you do us a favour on this video and pin information so my guys can just go to it and look at the different um sources that you put out on the on this video so i will uh, pin I, your I'll, comment I'll, yeah i will uh i'll try to send you it might be tomorrow because i gotta work yeah oh yeah it's fine it's fine i'm gonna have to edit this anyway so but but just in the comment section if you yeah i'll send you a, a bunch of, of links and stuff like that uh, uh sure like no problems that'd be great i think you have most of them but, uh, yeah, but I'll but, to you, it's yeah, it's just so that people can use this yeah, particular video absolutely. just to look at the stuff because I think a lot of the stuff that you get is really interesting. This is why I wanted to have you on, and I hope you'll come on again. Absolutely, man. Let me know. Uh, uh, we can do this regularly and intermittently whenever you want. I, uh, I love talking about the subject. Yeah, ladies and gents, Osvaldo Franco. Thank you very much, mate. Anytime, man. Cheers. So there you have it folks, Osvaldo Franco, a great friend to the channel and an excellent UFO researcher. It's clear he trusts to the Stars Academy of Arts and Science and Tom DeLong. Now, 
Speaking of Tom DeLong, he puts a video out yesterday. This video that you're watching right now has taken me a week to edit. So this is the last touch that I'm putting on there. But To The Stars Academy did a video titled The Beginning of Things to Come from To The Stars Academy. And it's clear to me you can see Tom's vision in that. Now, I put a video out two weeks ago when I said something was going to come out in March. This information did come from Osvaldo Franco. Now, I want to get him back on because we had a conversation briefly after the interview where he said to me he wished he'd have spoken about so, many, so much more. But we did get carried away because it's the first time we've ever met each other. So, hey-ho. Um, but yeah, we'll get Osvaldo back on the channel and if there's any questions that you want him to uh, to talk about in the next video or you want us to speak about uh, different subjects of UFOlogy, then bang them in the uh, dis the comment section. I was going to say description, then, but make sure you do check out the description for all the links there. But yeah, I'm Alien Addict. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell end. Good night, God bless, and mind the bugs don't bite.